The most noticeable thing about the Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits is that they are easily recognizable because of their compact bodies that are also shaped like a round ball. These rabbits also have cute and small ears. When these bunnies are fully grown, the females appear to be a little larger compared to the male of the species. These Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits also have strong, short legs, but they can move and hop at a speed of about 15 miles per hour. These rabbits love digging into burrows, and they use their big claws for this. In terms of their tails, they are very short and are almost hidden in their bodies. Now for their fluffy coats, the Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits have one of the softest of all. Their coats allow them to maintain their internal temperatures to be appropriate at all times. Their fur also protects their bodies against harsh weather and polarizing temperatures. During the cold winters, the fur of these bunnies becomes much denser and thicker. When their fur has undergone molting, especially during the summer, their fur becomes much lightweight. In terms of their colors, these rabbits are also unique and easily recognizable. Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits have noticeable brownish-gray colors, with an even darker hue that appears much grayer in the winters. In the summer, the colors of the Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits tend to lean toward more brownish hues. Of course, because this breed lives in the wild, there are still lots of chances that these rabbits exhibit different variations of color. In some specimens of this rabbit, some light spots can be seen toward their nostrils as well as the margins of the ears. These Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits are the smallest of the rabbit species, and they can easily fit into the palm of a person's hand. Their usual weight is between 246 to 462 grams. In terms of length, the average range is 23.5 to 29.5 centimeters long. Their extremely tiny tails are as long as 15 to 24 millimeters, while their hind legs are about 67 to 76 millimeters long. Origin of the breed The Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbit is a unique and isolated community population of the Pygmy Rabbit or the Bracolagus idahoensis that is naturally found living in Washington State. Just like their name, these rabbits are known for their petite size. Usually, the adult-sized Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbit weighs less than one pound. The Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits have been residing in the Great Basin area towards the western area of the United States. For the last 100,000 years, they had stayed in this place until about 10,000 years ago, when glacial movements brought the Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbit to a different area and separated from the rest of their relatives, which led to some genetic differences for this breed. Unfortunately, the Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits are already near extinction. These rabbits are now federally classified as an endangered species. In 2016, only 16 individuals were recorded that are living in the wild, according to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. They were transported to different breeding programs in various states, hoping for a chance to preserve this beautiful breed of rabbits. Genetically, the last pure Columbia Basin pygmy rabbit named Bryn has already passed away in 2009. But, her offspring are the ones that are now repopulating the habitats of these rabbits and continuing their race. Availability and Natural Habitat the Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbit has lived throughout most of their lives in the Great Basin area and to the intermountain locations of the western United States. Specifically, these areas are southern Idaho, northern Nevada, southern Montana, southern Oregon, eastern California, Wyoming, Washington, and northern Utah. The Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbit can typically be found in locations that involve sagebrush, which is tall and dense. They depend on the sagebrush for their shelter and feeding needs throughout the year. During the winter months, most of their diet is primarily made up of sagebrush. But, for the other seasons of the year, the diets of these rabbits become much more varied, including some bunch grasses and other greens. Behavior The Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits are very small in size, so it is not a mystery that they do not enjoy calling for attention. They are very skittish and are always very shy. These bunnies do not love to stray far from their hiding burrows, and experts have observed that they are never more than 200 yards away from them. Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits are not territorial in nature, and they decide on the place to consider their home based on the availability of food. In terms of communication and perception, the Columbia Basin Pygmy Rabbits produce a few types of vocalizations like chuckles, squeals, and squeaks. When they are alarmed, these rabbits can squeal quite loudly. The males are also known to exhibit some of these signals to express their dominance. Some scientists also suggest that Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits might also use chemical or hormonal cues to communicate with each other, but this statement is yet to be studied. Conservation The threats to the lives of the Columbia Basin Pygmy rabbits are mainly due to the loss of their habitats because of wildfires, clearings, and urban developments. Even in the best types of situations, the life expectancy of these rabbits is as short as 3 to 5 years. 
This number of years gets even cut off when they serve as the prey item for other larger animals. The commonly known predators of the Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits are preyed upon by badgers, bobcats, coyotes, foxes, weasels, owls, birds of prey, and sometimes human hunters. Predation is also considered to be the top reason for both young and matured Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits. Common Health Problems Though these Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits are quite hardy and strong, they still encounter some health challenges throughout their life. Here is the list of the most common rabbit diseases to know about. Ear mites. Ear mites are tiny, little bugs that set up and live inside the ears of your rabbit. With this infestation, you will notice your rabbit's ears being brown, crusty, and itchy. So, as owners, if you notice your rabbit's ears if you notice them scratching them a lot, you should check their ears every day to make sure that they will not make a jump on them. If you notice the ears of your rabbit are infected with ear mites, you can use a home treatment using some oil and a dropper. Vegetable oil is more than okay to satisfy this need, and it is also very inexpensive. You just have to place a few drops of oil in the ears of your rabbit twice a day within a week. This oil smothers the ear mites and gets rid of the crusty skin from the ear. However, owners must remember that they should not pick out the scabs of the ears of their rabbit's ears. The scabs will clear out naturally without the need to pick them out. This will avoid giving pain to your rabbit and avoid opening them up to the possibility of infection. You should just allow the oil to do the work. Ear mites can also be avoided by not allowing your Columbia Basin pygmy rabbits to lie down in the hay and a once a week drop of oil in their ears as a preventive measure against ear mites. Sorehawks. Sorehawks are quite a painful state for rabbits and are usually exhibited when they are living in less than ideal conditions. This happens when the rabbits do not have a place where they can rest their feet and when their feet become sore and calloused on the bottom. To prevent this, owners should opt out of choosing a wire enclosure or hutch for the rabbits. They should have nesting boxes to rest their feet in, mats for their feet to rest on, and a board where they can properly lie down. Snuffles Snuffles can be exhibited by rabbits through sniffling and unnecessary nasal discharge. Because of this, owners must pay attention to what is happening to their pet rabbit. Some rabbits with snuffles also show symptoms like watery eyes, matted paws, and sneezing. Basically, this illness can be prevented by maintaining the healthy diet of rabbits, as well as keeping their surroundings clean. The snuffles come from bacteria, so make sure that the immune system of your rabbit is well equipped to fight against foreign bodies and not giving bacteria space to grow. If your rabbit falls under this disease, the usual treatment is through antibiotics, but it is always best to bring them to the veterinarian for the best solution for you. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.